having all kinds of attacks of dogs to leave their judgments. How do I know? He sent forth his word and his word heals and delivered them from their destruction. I stand on this altar. Every ferocious dog that have been attacking your destiny, your family, your marriage, today we bury them. Everything, every night worker, every night agent of darkness that are coming to feed you, that are coming to mesmerize your life, to oppress your life, today in the name of Jesus, their hold shall be broken. Every garment of reproach, every garment of failure, every garment of prostitution, every garment of repeating the seed and the harvest of your family that is contrary to Jesus, today we tear them into pieces. Every garment of delay, every garment of delay, every garment of turn by turn. Today it is done in the name of Jesus. Your relationship with in laws, maybe one or two among us may be going through almost the same or even worse. And we also have it written and established in Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Genesis chapter 2, the book of the beginnings. God said, therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. But we discover that nowadays, most homes are under pressure, tension, because of interference, positive and negative interference into marriages. Unfortunately, we don't have the wisdom, the capacity to build the relationship and to make it very, very strong. Marriage should be the closest relationship you ever have in your life. But we discover that many a times it's not the closest because there's someone called mother-in-law, father-in-law, brother-in-law, one way or the other, that have been allowed unnecessarily or that have not really taken they are, they've not understood the definition of marriage or we have not placed them well. God's expectation for couples is to see that couples place priority on their love, on their commitment to each other any day, any time. The day you got married, you signed physically and spiritually that you are going to stay together and no man should put us under. Today, quickly let me say this, we will never, never advocate breaking away from your parents or your parents-in-law just because you said you are married. That's why we said we need wisdom. Because many of us, especially the so-called Akada, my love, my love, babe, 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 you know, all those things, at times is detrimental to our relationship with our families. Many of us, we got married at the age of 30. So you've had a very long relationship with your father, with your mother, and now you are married. Between 30 and 35, you discover that there will be conflicts, especially if you have been so bonded. Some ladies are so bonded to their fathers. Some are so bonded to their mothers. So how do you do it? And the Bible says, a man shall leave and cleave or even weave to the wife. Then how do you cope with the interference of your mother-in-law, of your father-in-law. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, vice versa. Proverbs 19, 26 to 27. Proverbs 19, 26 to 27. He who mistreats 
his father and chases away his mother. He is a son who causes shame and brings reproach. Cease listening to instruction, my son, and you will stray from the words of knowledge. Today, we have gathered to gather knowledge. Gather wisdom for us to know how to handle tensions in our homes, in our marriages, in our families, especially as it comes from our in-laws. Amen. Proverbs 20, verse 20. Proverbs 20, we see the danger of not handling these issues very, very well. He said, whoever causes his father or his mother Whoever despises, whoever does not treat them well, whoever does not understand by wisdom how to place them and see good, be in good relationship with them, he said, his lamp will be put out in deep darkness. So it's a serious thing. Many of our sisters, many of our brothers now, you know, you are not even in talking terms with your mother-in-law, with your father-in-law. Why? Because you lack wisdom to handle it. And you see, whether we like it or not, the Bible says, honor your father and your mother. Ephesians chapter 6, 2 to 4. Ephesians chapter 6, 2 to 4. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with you and you may live long on the heart. That's why. Before you get married, accept your spouse's parents. Accept their family. Understand. That's why we encourage courtship. You don't just say, okay, I'm pregnant. Okay, I pack in. I pack in. You don't care to know what the family is all about. You are going to meet certain uh, Issues that you may not be able to cope with. So you need to study the family before you go into it. Let me tell you, many people, when they see the family they are going to, though they love the lady, they say, I can't cope with your family. Before they go into marriage, they say, I can't cope with your family. Please, I love you, but I, I don't think I can cope with what is happening in your family. I back out. Even before they go into the marriage. It's not compulsory. You must marry and marry into trouble. You marry for peace and rest. So even when you notice that something is wrong, you just by reason of understanding, you see that this family trend, there's a negative pattern going on in the family. Don't put your head, except you have prayed through. Don't put your head. There are many of us, the way they treat, they train us, is not the way they train some people. You understand? Some people, you have never seen your father shouting at your mother, not to talk of slapping your mother. And lo and behold, in their own family, every day they use bottle, they use stone, they use all kinds of things. And he said, no, 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 no. If you are trained in this kind of environment, I don't think we can cope. Simple. That is the purpose of courtship. You evaluate things and say, no, I can't, I can't cope. Sorry, God will give you another man. God will give you another woman. Let's go on our way. Simple. It's not for sex. It's not for, it's not for, okay, ah, he promised me, he promised me a car. Okay, we are, after we marry, we will go and stay in Canada. If go beyond that, family pattern can follow you to anywhere. And you will not be able to cope. Whether you like it or not, some ladies, they pray that they don't ever have in-laws. They pray, father, give me husband, but not with mother. Let me tell you, somebody will pray that prayer for you too. That's why we are talking about it, that you must get wisdom. Some mothers are very, very possessive. You have to get wisdom. And some of you now, you are very, very possessive. You have started now, you have started. Your children are very small now, you have, you have started. You have started. 
By the time they want to get married now, you begin to give them problem. You say, I, I, breast, I breastfed you for 18 months. Ah, they are going to see a shock out. <laughs> I want to talk in the area of um, managing your in-laws. Mm. Uh, I will talk to sisters in this room that when you are single, that is the time for you to build your character. Mm. You cannot build your character when you enter your you know, matrimonial home. It will be very difficult for you to cope and to learn. Because as at now, you find it difficult to even relate with your friend. You snub them. You find it difficult to relate freely with your mind. The same thing will happen when you marry. You will find if you are, uh, you are single now as a sister, you find it difficult to relate freely for people to accept you. You have three, you know, sisters, friends. Two of them are already condemning you. Work on yourself. Because when you get married, you can't change yourself. The same thing will repeat itself. And when you get there, your in-laws, they will not hide it. They will point an accusing finger on you. Because this, during your youthful age now, that's the time you can check, you can, you know, relate, you can, you know, learn Develop a lot of characters. things. And build on your character. If you're the time you don't know how to talk or respect, when you get there, they will teach you in a hard way. That's why it's good for you now. You are in a group. They always point accusing finger at you. Why are you always this? Why are you always this? You say they hate me in that group. They don't like me. It's a big lie. Walk on yourself. Look inward. Why is it that only me all the time when I'm in a group, this character exposes me or exposes me? You have to take care of that particular because five people cannot be saying the same thing at the right time and say they are wrong. So sisters, please work on yourself because when you get married, your husband will not be able to do it for you. You are the one that will, you know, build your home. As we said in our good women, you are a salt. If salt preserves, isn't it? It prevents decay. Your character will prevent corruption. Your character will prevent decay as a woman. And when a salt, you know, loses its value, what happens? It's of no use. They will trample upon it. So if you don't build on your character to salt your marriage, and to prevent decay, when you get there, because you refuse to build capacity, you won't find it, you know, so enjoyable. And in the area of having children, is you see, in the calendar of God, as human, God has not created us to be barren. If you're a child of God, the Samuel that is coming out of you is going to be a great prophet. So you have to wait. If you are the John the Baptist, God is going to use to bring forth. He's coming forth. So it's a matter of time. Just as Daddy said, we have witnessed in this church people of 15 years, people of 12 years, 2, 3, even 4. After 10 years, 15 years. So a lot of pressure will come around you. But as people intercede on your behalf, they cry on the altar, you too, you look up unto God. And your faith is intact. God will surely reward you. He will never put you to shame. Because the name of the Lord is at stake if he doesn't answer you also. So God will arise to defend his name also because of your belief in him. So you have to cling to God. But if you are the type, you don't want to stay with God, you want to try there, try here, stay to God and God will work it out. Amen. Because they that wait upon the law, you renew your strength. Amen. And the Lord will fulfill you in Jesus' name. Amen. Faith cometh by hearing and the hearing of the word of God. Your growth as a child of God is based on what you hear and what you can imagine. To improve your knowledge and dominion in the area of your spiritual life, business, marriage, family, finance, and your relationship, Increase. you need to constantly take in the word of God. All these thoughts provoking teachings are found in the teaching of Pastor Owner Joseph. Proverbs 28 verse 10. When things are happening contrary in your life, who do you go to? Many people that you go to, they cause you to go even further astray. He said, whoever causes the upright to go astray in an evil way, he himself will fall into his own pit. But the blameless will do what? Inherit good. Many people that you hold to be your strength, they are the one leading you astray. 
making you throw trust in them to beg them for your destiny. And your destiny is not in the hand of any man. Make God your strength. Get your DVD and MP3 today. You can order your DVD and MP3 from any part of the world. Visit our website with the information displayed on the screen.